Good evening and welcome to another edition with the Running Rehab Guy. Welcome to Life in the Quarantine. This is my first one that I've done uh, with kind of our new interesting regulations we've got going on with all the interesting stuff going on in the world. Fortunately enough, I was able this spring with a little bit of some of the fun conditions out there to be able to bring you a nice review of a new offering from Topo Athletic. It's the Run Venture 3. That's one of their kind of go-between shoes in their line. At 9.2 ounces, it's a pretty lightweight trail. There's a bunch of updates to the previous model that they had had out. First part of the shoe that you always take a look at first, or I do anyway, is the heel counter. Cool styling for the Run Venture, but also for most of the Topo Athletic shoes. They have listed on the back of the shoe the amount of drop that the shoe has from heel to toe. This shoe is a zero drop. Most Topos run somewhere between zero and five millimeters. I really love the fact that it's a zero drop shoe. It's nice and low to the ground. Stack height is pretty low, listed at about 20 millimeters of stack height as well, which is really pretty nice if you're somebody that likes to feel the trail a little bit under your feet, somebody that likes to really focus on perfecting your form, giving it the best that you can give out of every each and every run that you get. The other nice thing is it's pretty stylized along the back. You've got this nice suede back. It's got a little peak and valley logo along the back of it, along with the name of the shoe. The interesting thing though is they did take out the gator traps or the gator attachments that you can put onto the shoe that really has been a hallmark for most of their trail shoes. I'm not quite sure why they took it off other than the fact that maybe they were looking to save some weight in the shoe, which they obviously did. It's come really full circle in terms of the materials and really hasn't gained a lot of weight since its initial outing. Really any weight savings that they probably had from the heel counter is going to go into some of the interesting stuff that they've added to it that we'll talk about later on. Pretty flexible heel counter, nothing that's going to be super rigid or dig into the backside of your Achilles. It's going to give you just pretty much a little bit of good structure, enough that the shoe doesn't break down. It's not really going to limit your form in any way. Also not really going to be correctional in any way of pronation or supination at the heel. As you work your way through the shoe, what you're going to notice is along the sides we've got this TPU overlay that's very reminiscent of both Hydro Venture and also the MTN Racer from Topo in the fact that they have these crisscrossing patterns that give the shoe just a modicum of structure but also feature these wonderful little vent ports. Uh, the MTN Racer is one of the first ones that I noticed that had them. It provides some ventilation along the sides while also providing you some protection from splashback from the trail, especially if it's real soggy or snowy as it's been around here in the Midwest a couple of times yet this spring as I've worn them. The other thing that I like is that unlike the MTN Racer, which has both of the vents right along the frontage of the toe box, this one also has one at the midfoot, which is really pretty handy and also helps to wick the sweat and moisture out of the shoe a little bit better and kind of squeeze that stuff out from a couple of different angles. The other nice thing that they've done is that in previous models, they had this kind of technical overlaid fabric as part of the toe box and also part of you know, on the midfoot of the shoe. Now they have this nice ripstop fabric and I really appreciate that a lot, especially in the early morning when I'm going out disc golfing or when I'm going out on the trails that are a little bit more grassy or they've gotten some moisture the night before. It doesn't let in a ton of moisture. I mean, eventually it will soak through just like any shoe will, but it gives you some good resistance in the meantime. And the nice thing that I've also noticed over the course of time on gravel roads or over the course of time on uh, the trails where you get kind of sticks kind of poking at your shoe or you get things kind of grazing along the side of the shoe when you're doing lateral movements or anything of that nature through rough terrain, it tends to build, make, create a bit of buildup on the shoe and really it's very easy to clean. This shoe, I normally will take a bristle brush over the top of my shoe with a shoe shampoo to get rid of some of the dirt particles. All I really have had to do to clean this shoe, which I've had to do multiple times since it's been kind of sloppy out here, is really just go over top of it with the foaming cleaner and just throw a little terry cloth over top of it. Gets rid of all of it. Haven't had any stains. I certainly haven't had any rips or tears in the fabric. And this shoe, because I've enjoyed it so much, I've gotten over 150 miles out of this shoe so far. But this shoe, really as far as a shoe that's out of the box comfortable, is really quite nice for me. Now, one thing I will say about the shoe is that it is not going to provide you with a ton of really plush cushioning. This is not an offering from Topo that's like the MTN Racer or like the Ultra Venture or even so much like 
the ST3, which is low to the ground and flexible, this guy is gonna be a little bit more stiff and that's gonna be related to two things. One, the foam is much denser and therefore it's gonna give you a lot more durability, but there's also a trade-off there in the fact that it's going to be a little bit stiffer, more responsive. The other thing that's a little bit different than shoes like the SD3 is that you still do have the rock plate, much like you do in the Hydra Venture, that's going to go right from the edge of the arch all the way into the forefoot of the shoe. It has nice flex points, so the shoe will move and bend amazingly well. What I will say though is it creates a lot of torsional stability that if you're not used to a traditional stability shoe is going to be a little bit of a break-in period or really just kind of a get to know you period with the shoe. Just knowing that going in. The other thing is it does lead to a shoe that's a little bit more snappy in terms of the toe off. And I noticed that especially on my longer runs. Most of my longer runs that I've been doing have been in the New Balance 1500 and that one's going to be a little bit more flexible, still with a firm foam, but certainly not a rock plate. And so that was something I had to get used to on my last 16 miler I did. Now, the other thing that's going to make this shoe a little bit heftier, and might be the reason that we were trying to trim some weight off of the heel, new feature for this year, Vibram outsole. Previous years, you had your standard rubber that you'd gotten out of the Topo Athletic line, uh, fairly similar to what you'd see in a Magnafly, or see even in the ST3 I also had, really a fairly similar pattern. This guy is the Trek Evo XS outsole. So it's a little different than the Mega Grip. Honestly, I think it's better. I have noticed that with the Mega Grip, you had a really great sticky start to the shoe. Over time, as I got into the 200 to 250 mile range with the Mega Grip, I really noticed that it starts to wane and it finally starts to show some wear patterning. Now, not quite there as far as this shoe model goes. Like I said, I'm right at about 158 miles, I think I put into the shoe. But even so, this thing hooks up, grips up the trail. You're not gonna find yourself looking for purchase going up steeper climbs, even declines, uh, whether you're out on a technical trail or whether you're on gravel was one that I noticed was wonderful. We have some really undulating hills around here and it hooked up amazing. It was great, really at whatever pace you're going, whether you're plotting or whether you're really trying to hit your paces. Other than that, the one thing I did wanna share as well with this shoe that was just a little bit different is the styling cues. So this shoe, I kinda of knock on Topo a lot because they don't add a lot of colorways. So sometimes there might be one option, sometimes there might be fairly similar stock options year to year. This year they came with two coloring options. So you've got your kind of more bland blase pattern in terms of the black. You've also got this neat slate gray bluish color. You've got the red aglets for some nice styling. You've got a little bit of the tongue and some styling cues along the back that I had mentioned. It's really pretty fun. Now it's not going to be the brightest thing. It's not necessarily your Brooks Cascadia or your Peregrine that's gonna be right out there in front of you. And I think that's one thing that they could lean into maybe a little bit and create a little bit more of a panache or a pop to this next model. But honestly, if you're looking for a really great trainer, it's gonna perform well for you. It's really quite a beautiful thing. As far as anything else that could really be improved in the shoe, I still think that we could probably shave just a little bit of weight off without really a lot of trade off since the cushioning is already so firm. 9.2 ounces is pretty light, but in terms of its competitors, we could probably get it down closer to that 8.8 .8 or maybe even just right even at the nine flat and make a huge difference, especially when the shoe is wet. The shoe still seems to, to carry a little bit of weight, especially in the insole. If you pop it out, it's a pretty standard insole from Topo. It's an ortholite insole, very good at anti-stink, but at the same time, it also is going to soak through a little bit of moisture, especially when you're out there on your springtime runs and you're going for a long period of time on the dew swept ground. I feel like we could probably thin that out a little bit, take a little bit of beef off, and it's not really gonna give you any much difference in terms of your overall experience in the shoe. Cool thing with this one, retails for about $120 MSRP. And for all the features, I mean, you get your TPU, you get your vents, you get your Vibram rock plate, pretty great package overall. If you'd like to know more about the shoe, if you'd like to answer any questions that you might have, I have a more detailed review available on runrepeat.com. Otherwise, shoot me a like, ask any questions that you'd enjoy answered, and I would feel happy to answer them at any time. 
Other than that, I just love to say run happy and take care out there and stay safe. <laughs>